Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Petrozani. Here are your top stories this Thursday. A new child clinic has opened in Gwanda, Matabeles Land South, the first in Zimbabwe to be opened by a non-governmental organization. The Family Support Trust has officially handed over the clinic that has been built at Gwanda Provisional Hospital to the government. The clinic will see the provision of counseling, medical and psychological support services to child survivors of sexual abuse in Gwanda as well as surrounding areas. A song aimed at raising awareness on post-exposure prevention was also launched at the event. PEP is given to victims of sexual abuse to prevent them from being affected with HIV. Urban Grooves artist Trevor Dongo performed with the children at the official launch of the Awareness Song. In Zambia, six orphaned children of Lusaka's Chilenja Township spent a night in the cold after being evicted from their late mother's house. Their grandfather apparently sold the house, but neighbors claimed that the house was in fact sold by her mother, their mother's ex-boyfriend. Movi TV has this report. A family comprising of six orphans in Lusaka's Chilenja Township has been evicted from their house after their grandfather allegedly sold it off to another person. Noting that due to Movie TV News, one of their children, Peter Lupanga, says his grandfather sold off the house despite the court ruling stating that the house should belong to the children. It was illegal, no wonder we had yes, to sue our grandfather, now political court, and to court in Lamura to say that give back the property to the children. They need you, you should refund that person his money. Peter claims that the family has been living in the house since childhood and have nowhere to go. Meanwhile, the angered neighbors that sided with the evicted family have called on relevant authorities to intervene in their plight. The said grandfather could not comment on the matter as his phone was constantly out of coverage area. Naomi Chulu, Movie TV News in Lusaka. Zimbabwe has a new ambassador from the United States. On November 15th, Bruce, Bruce Wharton was sworn in, replacing Charles Ray, whose three-year tour of duty ended in July. The former Deputy Assistant Secretary for, Pub for Public Diplomacy says he's looking forward to working with Zimbabweans. I am deeply honored that President Obama has asked me to represent him in Zimbabwe and that Zimbabwe is willing to receive me. Thank you for having me as your guest. My family and I lived, worked, and learned in Zimbabwe a decade ago, and returning will be a new stage in our lives. We are excited about this opportunity to work with all of you again. I will need your help to know Zimbabwe of today. Americans and Zimbabweans have so much in common, family, faith, hard work, and love of the land which sustains our country's shared agricultural roots. For me, land is important for both economic and cultural reasons. My family and I have a home and a small piece of land in rural Virginia. It is our Kamusha. Many Americans have roots in Africa, and all Americans have an appreciation for the influence of African history, culture, and art on our society. I grew up in a home filled with African art, so this museum is one of my favorite places in Washington. Americans and Zimbabweans share a hunger for knowledge. The Library of Congress is the world's greatest library, the most complete collection of what human beings know. It is available here in Washington and online around the world for anyone who needs it. This freedom to organize and share information is essential to progress. Finally, justice. We all deserve it, 
and we need strong institutions to defend and administer it. Nations prosper when all people are equal before the law. Zimbabweans and Americans have both fought for justice, know how important it is, and know that it requires constant nurturing. I look forward to meeting you, to learning from you, and to working with you to build a strong future for both our nations. Tatenda. Siabonga. Now, we have another special feature. Today, Liam is exploring the origins of a website called Diasporian Darlings. Hello again. Now, you may have noticed a running theme on ATV. We're always very keen to promote groups of new people that are doing interesting and creative things. Yesterday, for example, we had the new lifestyle magazine, Deck. Previously, we've also had Twitter chatroom creator Nigel Magamu and his revolutionary 263 chat. All these people are trying to establish themselves and send out certain messages, and we want to help them do that. Today, we're exploring a website called Diaspora and Darlings. The site is the brainchild of two bloggers, Mukuka Mayuka from Zambia and Vimbai Guata from Zimbabwe. Makuka is a Zambian living in Australia, and Vimbai is a Zimbabwean living in South Africa. Both were articulating their experiences of living away from their homes and all the challenges and opportunities that come with that experience. The saying goes that two heads are better than one, and so Makuka and Vimbai joined forces, and the result was Diaspora and Darlings, a website that aims to inform, entertain, and provide companionship for Africans either living at home or around the world. So, joining us from her base in Melbourne, Australia, is Makuka, one of the founders of Diaspora and Darlings. Makuka, I've already told the viewers about how you guys got going, but it's a fascinating story, isn't it? Well, when we first started, we were both um, bloggers, and um, I was a blogger, obviously, in Australia, and she was a blogger in South Africa. And we, 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 we didn't really know each other, and we just kind of stumbled upon each other's blogs. And from there, we started to, to see similarities in our experiences um, and just different challenges that we were facing, both of us living in the diaspora. She was a Zimbabwean living in South Africa. I was in, I'm a Zambian living in, in Melbourne, Australia. So from there, um, we took it off, off our blogs into emails, and we started chatting, and we will just... We, I, I guess we we built up a support system for each other, and when a couple of well maybe a year later we just thought why don't we have a website that kind of sh shares um, shares a, well shares the same sort of um, well, well puts out the sort the same sort of relationship that we sort of built up via our blogs and our emails. We thought we would love for that to be um, something that we could put in put up onto a website and have people come on to the website and sort of build a relationship with us and share their own experiences and um, and their challenges and obstacles in the diaspora. And that's that's how Diaspora and Darlings was born. I think a few of our viewers might be interested. Have you two actually ever met? Yes, oh, we yeah. did. Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we met, um, I believe she might kill me. Um, she, I believe it was, tw mm, we, we met in, tw 2010? Yeah, we met in 2010. Um, she came to Australia for her sister's graduate, I think it was a graduation. Um, and so she came, she came to Melbourne for that. And then later in the, in the year, I went to South Africa for the launch of our website and to do like a showcase and stuff. So that was really good. So yes, we and have met. Yeah. Did, did you get on as much as you thought you would? Even better, and I think that a lot of people thought, "Wow, okay, this is just really strange." I think from a, from our friend side, we they just thought, "Who are these internet friends of yours that you have kind of um, connected with?" But um, that's the power of you know social media of blogging that you can be in different places, especially when you're in the diaspora. You can feel very alone, and then to find somebody who's going through the same experiences. Um, and you can connect is a wonderful thing. You talked about some of the challenges people face living in the diaspora. Could you just elaborate on those? Um, I think one of the, the biggest things is living away from your family members. Um, you, when you, when you, for example, I live in Australia, and that is very far away from, from Zambia. I have to take a plane from here to Perth, and Perth to South Africa. Africa, South Africa to Zambia, that's a good 18 hours to 20 hours 
um, airplane ride. It's expensive, to, so you can't go and see people all the time. So in some cases, uh, some people don't live with their, they leave their families, and that's their moms, their dads, uncles, aunts, and cousins, and everybody you know, and you live far away, um, and you're by yourself for the most part. So it's very hard when you're living away um, from people, and especially when you're going through um, hard um, hard times. For example, you might not have a job, or you get sick, and or someone passes away, and you're far away from family. You can't just um, go down the road and see someone or ask someone to come over and and sit with you and and hang out. Um, it's not. It's 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 very difficult. Yeah. The name diaspora and darlings has connotations of being aimed at women. Do you think the challenges that you've talked about are even harder for women? Um. Uh, well, in our in my experience, I would say a little bit more difficult. Guys, I t I think they're a little bit more adaptable. Um, you can throw them in anywhere, and they they thrive. I I, I think guys, I envy guys that a lot. I think females, we are more connected to our friends and our families, and we need that connection. Um, and that's why we started the website because. We felt that um, when Vimbai and I connected, we thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if other people could find that connection, even if they don't have their close friends um, or cousins and stuff like that. But if they could come to our website and feel like we're that cousin, we're that aunt or sister or mum. And yeah, and the experience, and that, that's sort of the experience, the diaspora and darling experience that we like to put out there. But it's not specifically for, for just women. Um, the guys, do come onto our site and um, read a lot of our material. Our recent article was on um, the first black um, rugby Hall of Fame inductee. So stories like that, we're trying to get the guys to come in and read and and, uh, and also, I guess, share their own experiences uh, about what to talk about. Aside from the challenges of living in the diaspora, what about the opportunities that come with that experience? Well, I think one of the greatest things about living in the diaspora is that you are, um, is you're, you're able to meet anybody and everybody. There are no restrictions on, on who, you, who you can meet, and it opens you up to meeting new people all the time. Um, when you're at home, you are kind of comfortable in your own space, and it tends to be, um, if you know someone, then someone will connect you to someone. But in the diaspora, we're all in this level. So there's no, there's no, I, I don't think that there's anything stopping us from getting to know one another. We're all just, it's all a melting pot. So if you, if you look at my friends, I have people, I have friends from Botswana, I have friends from Kenya, Nigeria, um, Zambia, Zimbabwe, all countries in Africa. And then when I'm in Zambia, um, obviously, I'm already hanging out with Zambians because that's all I know. Um, South Africa, you tend to gravitate to the people who you know. So, but then when you're out of your comfort zone um, and you you find people who are in the same sort of situation as you, you open yourself up to meeting new people and being introduced to other cultures. So it's really helped me, I think, um, know more about Africa. You just talked about African people being in a comfort zone. Do you think some people living in Africa don't know enough about the wider world? And is that something that you're aiming to help them with? Um, I think there's a lot of miscommunication. Another thing that w w we wanted to do with the site, there's a lot of miscommunication, I think, between Africans in the diaspora and Africans at home. Um, it's often felt that Africans in the diaspora are, have run away, they're cowards, they, um, they've left their problems behind. And then, and then the people in the diaspora are kind of looking at people at home, thinking, well, you know, these guys are always just leeching off us, or they're trying to, they're always trying to use us for something. You know, a lot of people tell stories of like ignoring an international phone call because they're scared it's a relative asking for money, you know, and things like that. And I think that um, stories like that come from a lot of miscommunication. It's not always like that. And I feel that um, with Diaspora and Darlings, we, we wanted to shed a light to people in the diaspora to say, well, people at home are going through this and this is what's going on with them. And then for people who, who are at home and they visit our site, they can see that it's not just all roses and um, wonderful <laughs> experiences in the diaspora either, yeah. And finally, 
how can our viewers at ATV get involved with Diaspora and Darlings? Well, um, we are everywhere on social media. We, are, we love our social media. So you can find us on Twitter at Diaspora ND. You can find us on Facebook, Diaspora and Darlings. You can find us at our website, www.diasporandarlings.com. Um, and you can also email us at, at info at diasporandarlings.com. So um, leave us a comment, tweet us, leave us a message. Um, we love everybody to contribute and to tell us their stories. We've got a lot of people, we have different sections on the site. On the site, So we have Life in the D, this is experiences about anything that you could come across in life. I don't know whether it's um, a problem looking for work, whether you're having um, issues with family, whatever the case may be. Maybe you have a spe specific story you want to share with us and you can write in and tell us. Um, we've also got the Love in the D section that talks about relationships in the diaspora and um, how, how we deal with them, especially with uh, women in the diaspora and how they, they sort of balance being modern women in the diaspora and also the traditional side of being African women. Um, yeah, we've got opinion pieces, we have recommended books and things like that. So if you like um, African books um, or you'd like to know more African writers, we've got a recommended section. So yeah. I, we love our site, Vimbai and I, and we've worked really hard on it. So if people want to come through and um, share their experiences and comment, we'll be really grateful and happy for it. Makuka, thanks so much for joining us, and we wish you the best of luck with Diaspora and Darlings. Thank you. Fascinating stuff there from Makuka. But for now, it's back to you, Charity. And Michael Mambo joins us again for today's sports news. Thank you, Charity. Yesterday we told you about the sacking of Roberto Di Matteo as the Chelsea manager. Well, the club have moved swiftly and replaced him with the Liverpool, former Liverpool boss, Rafael Benitez. The Spaniard has got a contract to lead the Blues until the end of the season. Some believe that the owner, Roman Abramovich, is hoping that the striker will be able to resurrect uh, Fernando Torres' form. In the Champions League, Manchester City have failed to qualify for the group stages for the second season in a row. The English champions came from behind to draw 1-0 with Real Madrid at the Etihad Stadium, but it was not enough to see them through. They, they now have one game only against Borussia Dortmund, which they must win in order to qualify for the Europa League. There is better news for Arsenal, who have qualified for the next round after a 2 0 win against Montpellier. The Gunners beat the French champions from goals by Jack Wilshere and the stunning volley from Lucas Podoski. They are currently second, and Arsene Wenger says he will play a strong side in their last game in the hope of finishing top of the group. In Zimbabwe, former Dynamo's coach Elvis Chuchu Jiweshe has issued an apology to the current Callisto Pasuo. The apology refers to comments made earlier this year by Chiweshe where he described Pasuo as too raw to lead Dynamo's to glory. Pasuo has gone on to prove Chiweshe wrong by successfully defending the Premier League title he won last year. He is now one of only three Dynamo's coaches who have won the league back to back, and Chiwesha, who coached Dynamos in 2010 but failed to secure a league victory, has taken back his words. That's all for tonight. We asked our Facebook family for weather reports today, and Kumbi Machele Maziwa sent this great report from Harare. Temperature-wise, Harare has a maximum temperature of 38 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 13. There's a high chance of rainfall nevertheless. Currently, humidity is, 80, is at 80 degrees with partly cloudy conditions as of now. Southeast winds are currently dominating in the current weather patterns, which has seen pressure decreasing to a record low. We would like you to send us weather reports in your area to our Facebook page. Thank you. Today's photo of the day is this great shot of Nason Masikume and his sister. Keep your photos coming to our ATV Facebook page. Thanks for watching ATV News and have a lovely evening.